Why was this Mercedes engine so fast in Brazil last year? After Brazil, Merck seemed to just be able to produce way more power, meaning Lewis could start literally at the back in the sprint race and still win the race on Sunday. So how did they do it? And will they be able to do the same thing in 2022? And we've got Scarbs back. The engine's last. Uh, Sorry, excuse oh, me. Oh, we've had a crash. Oh, <laughs> to help explain. So let's get into it. Right, so back in Brazil, we first saw this rocket engine, or as Mercedes called it, the spicy engine. They seem to have an outrageous power advantage on the rest of the field, with Hamilton reeling in cars from seconds back on that long back straight. And yet the teams were not allowed to change anything about that engine. So was it a secret upgrade or did they just find some extra power? So here's the deal. The teams in the regulations are only allowed to run three engines per year without getting any penalties. All the other teams split that up nice and evenly, essentially running their engines for seven races. Seven engines times three, that's your 21 races. Quick maths, except of course, Mercedes. The spicy engine, as they like to call it, that was physically exactly the same engine that was there before but what they did is they chose to run it much harder for a shorter period mm. so it's not that it made more power but it spent more of its life making full power if you see what i mean so that's the kind of the trick that they use so why didn't everyone else copy them well there is an issue with wear the engines wear pretty fast with such tight tolerances in Formula 1. And the harder you run them, the faster the engines wear. And with extra wear, you get less power and potential engine failures. So for a team like Ferrari, this just wouldn't make sense. They were able to have one big update to every part of the power unit, which they introduced earlier through the season, just as every other team did. What they were finding uh, with their power unit is it, it, its performance was degrading through those races. So in particularly the combustion engine was losing power because it slightly wears out and you know everything gets used up on it. You get this a lot in race cars. They often have an amount of time or mileage they can run up to before they need a rebuild, which is normally very expensive. But in F1, they can't do this. That led them to the Brazil engine, which was quite interesting. Is what they, I mean, Mercedes has been great. They always find some great names for these things. They call it the spicy engine. We had a party mode and stuff in the past, but the spicy engine basically was physically exactly the same engine that was in the car previously. There was no change to the physical parts. There was no upgrades. There were no tokens or homologation changes for that engine. Um, what they were able to do was simply have the engine that had a very, very short life, which was by the time Brazil came, I think it ran for two or three races in the end. They were able to just run that engine so much harder through those few races that it didn't come through to that sort of wear period that degrades the engine because it didn't have to last quite so long. So put simply, they turned the wick up for the last few races in the season. And this is kind of strange because Mercedes party mode and other engine mode changes were banned last season. But that is only for during the race weekend. They can make engine mode and engine map changes between the weekends. And so Mercedes did. And it's actually pretty clever. It's what they call the duty cycle of the engine. That means you've basically get so much use of so much life of that engine for so many miles. And you'll often you'll hear the driver being told by his race engineer, you have an overtake available, which is one of those kind of units of life from the engine that you just can't use, you know, as many times as you want. You have to kind of meter them out over the life of the engines. But it is surprising how fast these engines wear out. The engine in your road car could do 100,000 miles or so without showing a significant decrease in power. Back in 2014, I was told they lost about 80 horsepower over their life, which was uh, much shorter than it is now. Whereas now most of the teams report, you know, just a few percentage drop in the engine's performance over that period. But equally, as you then start to lose performance, you also risk unreliability, which is, you know, almost a, a bigger issue as well. And that development has come with the refinement that happens every year. They begin to understand the engines better and better. And any power gain or power retention over the life of the engine is a massive thing. But what is it that causes this drop in power? In terms of you know, how it loses power, it's in two ways. You get the, the lack of sealing uh, and increased friction from you know, the, the bearing, the piston rings and in the bearings. Uh, also, you can get some deposits starting to build up on the piston, in the valves, in the 
um, uh, inlet and exhaust tracks as well, and that has a small effect. In a normal car, you would replace these things in a service, but in Formula One, you're not allowed to touch these areas. The engines are sealed from the factory, so aside from looking inside them with a boroscope or changing the oil, that's all you can do. So when the seals, bearings, and piston rings wear out, that's it. You just need to replace the whole engine. So Mercedes made an incredibly bold call. They chose to run this engine for only three races so that they could crank the engine power right up. This meant they had the straight line pace to beat Red Bull, but it did cost them some pretty heavy grid penalties. But Mercedes made the call that the extra performance was enough to offset these penalties, which is incredibly brave. And actually made for some very good racing. What they chose to do is just reduce that engine's life just down to those two or three races at the back end of the year. Uh, and you really saw the results, you know, Lewis would have had maximum power available to him throughout the race, throughout qualifying, which really was what made the difference. It looked like he had a much faster car, a uh, much more powerful engine. It's not actually the case. You know, the engine was you know, on parity with the one that would have been, the fresh one that would have gone into Bottas's engine. They just chose to use all of that life with high power laps early in its life. But a combination of factors came together to allow Mercedes to pull this off. Firstly, Merck and Red Bull had so much pace over the rest of the field. Well, actually it was Max and Lewis. They were just miles ahead for the entire year. Secondly, Brazil had a sprint race. Lewis used the Saturday race to get back up to fifth from the back and not suffer too badly on the Sunday. He really sent it in that sprint. It was. It was mega to watch, wasn't it? That move on Norris was just epic. But after that race, the penalty was paid and he had this mega engine compared to Max's one that had to last the normal seven races. So Mercedes could simply afford to put a completely fresh engine, start at the back of the grid and power their way through as much as, you know, Bottas suffered all those engine penalties, you know, in that sort of second half of the year as well. So it's quite possible that you can say, well, look, we'll take the penalty because we can recover that during a race. And, you know, clearly Lewis was able to do that at Brazil and at subsequent races as well. And the mad thing is that this isn't counted in the cost regulations for this or next year. Their budget is much larger and it's not capped currently by the budget cap or any other restrictions within the regulations. So if uh, an engine manufacturer wants to just throw huge amounts of resource and money at developing an engine, they are allowed to do so. With all the cost capping regs coming in, it does seem a bit bizarre that they can just bin off a perfectly good $10 million engine because another one has a slightly better performance. So what's going to happen this year? Will Mercedes keep on doing this in 2022? So 2022, really the power unit regulations are virtually unchanged. Um, there's no real change to the, the hardware on the engine. Uh, there's no change to the, the budget caps and the, the penalties. The main change that is going to happen in two areas. First of all, they're going to start to run uh, E10 fuel, some biofuel and that will cost the teams initially a little bit of performance, but they will then remap the engine and they recover that lost power. I don't think that's anything that's really gonna hit one team more than another or one engine more than another. So this new fuel is essentially the stuff that the US has had for a while and has come to the UK in the last couple of years. It's gasoline, but with 10% ethanol that they can make from renewable sources. The other thing is that now it's kind of a critical point in the development of these engines in that they're allowed to make a change to every aspect of that power unit. And then before the first race, they're then going to homologate that engine. So the spec of that engine is then going to be fixed, not just for 2022, but equally into 23, 24, 25. And then we get the new regulations in 2026. There's very little they can change physically on the engines. I think it's like oil and spark plugs and a few bits sort of around the exterior surfaces of the engine. But in terms of the things that we really think of an engine, that's fixed. The teams can't even dismantle the engine between the races. Uh, the FIA come along and put blanking plates over the exhaust ports and over the inlet ports. And all the teams can do is either put a boroscope into the engine and have a look around or 
examine the oil. So physically, there's nothing they can do. And those changes may seem small, but when combined over tens of thousands of RPM, over a whole race distance, the performance deficit is really clear. And that will be why F1 teams develop components extensively, down to the seals and bearings, because over the life of the engine, they play a massive role in the performance of the car. But the interesting thing is that they can change the software. So that's the mapping and the deploy settings as much as they like. So for the next few years, that is where the engine manufacturers are going to be turning for their power gains. It's all about where you can regenerate the energy and then deploy that same energy. Now there is just one other exception to that. And we did see that through the year this year with both of the, the leading manufacturers. You can make changes to the hardware of the engine based on three parameters, reliability, safety, and cost. So if a team came along and found a reliability fix, as, as you know, Honda did mid-season because of the vibrations they had, uh, they are allowed to make those changes. And whilst that seems like a good excuse to upgrade your engine, mm, Michael, it's gonna blow up, so we need this new turbo? The downside with that is all the paperwork they submit to the FIA to justify that change gets distributed in summarized form to all the other engine manufacturers so everybody else knows what you're up to. Now, it's quite clear that you could make a reliability change if you've had you know, some problems with the engine. That leads to increased performance and teams will always try and exploit that to an extent as well. So these engines will continue to kind of creep up in you know, drivability, in maximum power, in reduced fuel consumption over you know, the next few years. But it will be in much smaller increments than we've seen with these big you know, sort of semi uh, annual updates. So it seems the rocket engine is here to stay, but expect Red Bull to take notice and match it. It could be a real war this year on who uses their engine and when. That is presuming it's not another team, of course. And that's what's great about a rule change. For all we know, Haas could be quickest next year. You should check out this video where we went over all the new bits on the 2022 F1 car. It's going to be a really exciting year for the nerdy engineering stuff. Thanks so much to Scarbs for this one. You should follow his Twitter at Scarbs Tech and make sure to subscribe to this channel as well as we're going to be making much more of this content for the whole of the 2022 Formula One season. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.